again, workforce development, but it takes leadership, right? And it not takes and it takes leadership within the community through the through the non for profit, through the NGO organizations, the schools, the hospitals, anchor institutions within the cities, and more importantly, the city government and the school districts working hand in hand to make sure that there are opportunities for the disenfranchised community, those residents and those kids to have an equal shot at having a productive and good career, right? Um, I often tell the story, um, I actually, you know, I'm a product of uh, low income housing, you know, um, lived in disenfranchised community. And I kind of look at how I made my way up and kind of some of the struggles and the barriers that I have to do. And I'm probably an exception, but within my community, but it doesn't have to be that difficult, right? Um, that's one of the reasons why I took the job as a CIO for the city of Aurora. Um, I could have stayed in my previous job, which is a financial services company, a Fortune 50 company. I was very comfortable. I had made a lot more money there than I did here, but I wanted to serve, right? But one of the things that I reason why I wanted to serve was to drive social impact, right? So I started looking to say, how can I help the underserved community? And those kids like me, because those kids that are in the underserved community, that's my story. That is me, right? I said, how can I help them, right? So what we did was through a collaboration of private entities within, within the city of Aurora that work with the city, um, the local school districts, we have five school districts in the city of Aurora, which is very unique because the city of Aurora the population is 200,000, but we sit in four counties, right? And we have five school districts and also um, a, a, a local not-for-profit that focuses on uh, delivering uh, technology courses to the underserved community. We created a public-private partnership with that organization, with another organization called Tinkerworks that delivers K-12 STEM curriculum. APS Training Institute, that's the institution that delivers um, computer courses to the underserved community and the city of Aurora. But the city of Aurora acted as the convener. So my job was to say, how can I address this topic by bringing partners together within a public-private partnership, delivering community impact, right? And what we created back in 20, I got to get the dates here because COVID's kind of messed up my frame of thought here. <laughs> um, we basically did a pilot of 50 kids back in 2020 to deliver K through eight STEM programming to kids in the disenfranchised communities that provided them access to free STEM training just to pique their interest and to get them started, you know, within that space, right? Because keeping in mind that, you know, these kids in the disenfranchised communities would not have access to those classes. They would have to pay for that, right? Uh, these are the have nots, you know, they're low income, they're, you know, average to medium income, you know, they're below that within the community, right? You know, the city of Aurora, again, the population is 200,000, 50% of the population is Hispanic, 10% of the population is African American, the other 10% is Asian American, and the rest is Caucasian. But we have a large disenfranchised community. So we started that pilot and it was wildly successful, right, in uh, 2020, right? And then the mayor said, how can we expand this out and test this on a broader scale? So the next year, we basically did 400 students, right, in 2021, and it was very successful. Well, we have the data, the demographics to prove it, right? And then this year, we actually ended up doing 1,600 originally was the target, but we surpassed that by the end of the summer, right? And we extended it for another 400. So we served 2,000 kids in the disenfranchised communities in the city of Aurora, K through A, introducing them to STEM, science, technology, and engineering mathematics courses for free, right? So it starts at the early ages and sparking the interest and giving them access, you know, to those opportunities at an early age to get them their mindset involved and say, yeah, we can do this, right? This is something that I want to do, right? And remembering. 
of all jobs in the market today require STEM training or some type of STEM skill sets. So, and we're very proud about that.